tucked way in the corner of Tyler Arboretum, actually across the street from our sequoia tree, is South Farms. South Farm was once an active agricultural site, and now nature has reclaimed it. It is home to a diversity of plants, insects, and even bats. The wooden structure is our bat house. Also located in a corner of South Farms is our citizen science program, the American Chestnut Orchard, which is led and managed by dedicated Tyler volunteers. Hi everyone, I'm Mandy Santiago, Executive Director here at Tyler Arboretum. And today I'm speaking with a longtime member and volunteer Dan O'Keefe. Hi Dan, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the project here? Sure, hi Mandy, sure. Um, so in the early 1900s, the chestnut blight, which is a fungal disease of the American chestnut tree, was discovered in New York City. It had been imported probably on some nursery stock or lumber from China. And in the few following years, so, so from 1904 to about 1910, 1912, it spread up and down the East Coast so that in around 1910 or 1912, it was passing through, spreading basically through Delaware County in Pennsylvania. So at the time that the blight came through here, the chestnut tree, the American chestnut tree, was a major component of the local woodlands. And in fact, the surveys that were done at the time of uh, at the time of the blight passing through said that you know about 40% of the trees in the woods in this area were American chestnut trees. And over the next few years, almost all of them were infected and died. So it was a, a fairly epic scale uh, disease of this plant. In fact. Somewhere on the order of four billion trees were lost in the East Coast in the range of the chestnut tree to this disease. Most of the trees are fairly widely distributed if they still exist in the wild and too far apart to actually cross pollinate. Chestnut, American chestnut tree is actually has to, is obligatory cross pollinating. So while the trees have both male and female flower parts, they need to get pollen from another tree so that when distance between them becomes very high, the population is in fact unstable and starts to decline. So it's because of the effect of the unsustainable population in the wild that we established this orchard, or where the Pennsylvania chapter of the American Chestnut Foundation helped to establish this orchard. So we grow a lot of trees in close proximity to one another. Some of them get big enough in order to to flower and we, we actually have a fairly stable production of nuts from this orchard so that we can keep uh, continue the species basically. So that's the sort of conservation aspect of why we have this orchard here. So Dan, can you tell us what point in time did the nursery start and what volunteers and organizations helped us get to this point? Well, the orchard was actually planted in 1997. And at the time, there was a space for about 200 trees in here. Now, right now, there's about 136 of the remaining original plantings. So they're around the order of 23 years old. So these were actually collected from 12 different uh, areas of Pennsylvania. Um, again by the chapter of the American Chestnut Foundation. And so uh, we have uh, essentially 12 different uh, lineages of the trees that are growing in this orchard that came from well, that many spots in, in Pennsylvania. So this block of trees, these two rows, mm -hmm. all came from an individual tree called the Joliet tree in Schuylkill County, Pennsylvania. And by and large, m many of these trees still have their original trunks 
as you can see from this one, this is actually the biggest tree in the orchard. Interesting. And um, the, there is something special about these because most of them seem to be somewhat more resistant to the blight than the average American chestnut trees that we found. So a lot of them have gone into our specific cross program. So we've, we've been crossing particularly into these ones. And because, well, because they're larger, they also have a tendency to flower more, so we have easier access to them. Dan, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening at the nursery now, and a little bit about our latest arrivals? Sure. So in, in addition to collecting open pollinated nuts every year, which are essentially grown up and distributed to people who are interested in growing chestnut trees in Pennsylvania, We've been uh, filling in some of the open areas of the orchard. There are spaces where there are trees that are either missing or, or have died off. We've been trying to plant those with uh, in, uh, some of the intentional crosses that we've made in the past few years. So one of, the, one of the aspects of that is that we've been going out to large surviving chestnut trees in the sort of environment around us. Um, what we've been doing is collecting pollen from those trees and using it to cross into the flowers in our orchard. So now we're actually collecting germplasm from the local area of large surviving trees and using those to make new seeds and the seedlings that you see here Several of them actually came from crosses just like that. Well, Dan, thank you for the fascinating overview about the nursery. I can't imagine this is all done by one person, though. You must have some volunteers. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do as a volunteer and how folks who are interested can help? Uh, not at all is it done by any one person. So, yeah, we have a great group of volunteers. Usually our season starts uh, late April or May and runs through to October. There's two busy seasons. One is June when the, the trees are flowering and we're doing uh, our controlled crosses. And then another one towards the end of September when we're in the harvest, basically. Other times we're pruning. Uh, so in the sort of intervening uh, uh, times we come here and basically cut out a lot of the dead and dying um, sprouts that we have here and just general maintenance weeding under the trees trying to keep them a little bit clear um, and, and you know making it so that they're at least somewhat presentable so I, I started volunteering here um, about four years ago I think this is my fourth season here um, John Wenderoff who uh, was leading the program at the time was really very welcoming he was really I think he was glad to have me start helping out. So over the past few years I've taken on a little bit more responsibility for the breeding of this. But uh, John really um, led the effort in terms of you know what we should be doing and when we should be doing it. And his also he was president of the um, Pennsylvania chapter of the American Chestnut Foundation for two years. Um, I'd like to I, I thank John a lot because he really got he really got this volunteer effort going, um, so a lot of the way it looks and what we've been able to do is really due to his effort. So Dan, for some of our curious explorers, how can they access the American Chestnut Nursery? Well, the, uh, the, the orchard is actually enclosed by a fence. The fence, the intent of the fence is to keep deer out. It's not to keep people out. If you look at the gate, the gate has a latch on it. The latch is simply to keep it closed. It's not locked. So visitors are welcome to take a look at the trees either from outside the enclosure or if they feel comfortable in undoing the gate and making sure they close it behind them, they're welcome to go in and take a look around. Also, I mean, are they gonna arrange a visit? with either me or John Wenderoff, who generally takes care of, you know, showing visitors around, or they can volunteer to work in the orchard. <laughs>